And now, people, when I woke up this morning, I heard a disturbing sound. What I heard was the jingle jangle of a thousand long stones. I'm talking about the soul of all men and women, the part of this life. Wait a minute. Those long bank of souls roaming on the sea on the earth. Don't be lost when the time comes. For the day of the Lord cometh as a thief in the night. Yo, what's going on, folks? Xander J. Hobson here. The brilliant artist movement. Hell for love of news. And man, you won't believe I have a, a great guest today. I rode like about an hour and a half north on the New Jersey Turnpike. Got off at exit 13A. And I found myself, I bumped into the old country boy, Leon Muhammad. Matchmaker, trainer, managing all those other good uh, accolades that come with being around the boxing game for more than 50 years. I'm going to talk to Brother Leon Muhammad today, man, about uh, Deontay Wilder. Primarily, we're going to talk about uh, Deontay Wilder and Mark Breland because uh, it seems to me that Mark Breland is getting a real bad break from Deontay Wilder. And I, I personally, I can't understand that. First and foremost, right, I don't know Mark Breland from a can of paint. Never seen the man before. Probably wouldn't even know who he was if he was walking down the street and I didn't have my glasses on. But that's neither here nor there. The one thing that I knew, that I do know about Mark Breland, the man was a phenomenal fighter as an amateur and as, as a pro. In the amateurs, Mark Breland went something like maybe like 110 and 1. Man was a uh, Olympic gold medalist. He was like three or four time world amateur boxing champion. Mark Breland was the first guy, and I believe the only guy, to win five New York Golden Gloves championships. It didn't take Mark Breland to stay around for 400 fights to do what Vasily Lomachenko done. But believe me, if Mark Breland wanted to stick around like Vasily Lomachenko stuck around, he would have been a two-time Olympic gold medalist as well. And let's not forget two times world welterweight champion in the professionals. I'm just stating the facts as I know it. So with no further ado, I done took up enough time. I'm gonna turn this interview over to Leon Muhammad, my main man, my elder brother from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, the fella who I thought was the father of 50. Marcellus, good evening afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> First of all, Brother Hobbs needs no introduction. He do what he do. But what I will say is that Mark Breland is more person with me because Mark is my family. And I explained to Brother Hobbs that Mark's grand, great grandmother and my grandmother were sisters. And we are, when we all of us come out of Denmark and Orangeburg, South Carolina, Mark lived in New York, grew up in New York, but Mark was born in Denmark, South Carolina. His aunt and mother and them still down there in Denmark. But what I will say, first of all, Mark Green is a loyal soldier. And he's not a guy that talk back and argue over, over social media. And Brother Hobb, you've seen the interviews, you did interviews on this. Not one time you heard Mark Beeler respond to this moron in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Because I know Mama Wilder with a good old, his mother's a good old sweetheart Southern Christian woman. I met her quite a few times in New York. And she didn't raise him that way. Sometimes when we get money, especially in, my, in our community, Brother Hobb, a lot of us change. Mm. Now, First of all, you're only good as your team. And and, and, and I got respect for Shelly Finger. Shelly and I go back. When I watched the tape and I and I looked and I saw when Mark threw the towel, I saw Shelly holler at him. How you gonna holler at a guy that been with you since 1984? The guy made a decision that Buddy McGurk didn't make. And unfortunately, and, and it's not a bad shot. I love Buddy McGurk. But three months earlier, Buddy lost the fight in murder by listening to the fighter. Mm. So, 
not put a shot at Buddy. Buddy, my man. Show up, Buddy McGurk. And we still praying for Buddy because I ain't never lose a party in the ring, brother. Uh, 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 but I, I had a couple of fighters going to the One fight went in the corner on, 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 the, on me and, and the late Johnny Boss's watch. Mm. And you, we just were talking about Johnny Boss. So Mark did the right thing. No doubt that Mark Breland done the right thing by Deontay Wilder. First of all, the bond between a fighter and a trainer is the bond of father and son. No question about it. Uncle and nephew. No question about it. Elder brother and younger brother. That's a fact. They're friends, they're family. So it's real cool and hip for Deontay Wilder to say, I wanted to die in that boxing ring. Well, we all know, Deont first of all, Deontay, you got too much money, all right? You yeah. got too much money to want to die in the boxing ring. Why? Who in their right mind as rich as you, Deontay Wilder, would want to die in the boxing ring when you're worth more than $30 million? So just the pure notion of, of wanting to die in the boxing ring, matter of fact, you should, you should thank Mark Breland for stopping the fight because guess what by mark stopping the fight he left you in a situation where first of all you can spend your money and you can spend your money in good health if mark would have left you in that ring and you would have ended up being a babbling idiot let's say let's say you didn't die uh deontay let's say you ended up like uh gerald mcclean where as though basically you're you're a living vegetable now you got all this money but you're in poor health Somebody gotta take care of you. And somebody gotta take care of you. Wipe your butt and all that shit. How would you uh, how would you your own sister? Yeah, how would you feel if Mark Breland would have set you up for that by not looking out for your best interest and stopping the fight? Let's let, let's have it, Leon. So here's the point. You make all these excuses. First you said it was the costume. Then nobody tell you put on 25 costume. Then you blame Mark Breland. Now you said Mark would been disloyal. If a guy been disloyal, why the hell you paid a million dollars for the last 12 years? Yeah. If he's a disloyal soldier? Right. You pay a guy, you pay Mark 10% of all the money you made for the last 12 years? Mark is filthy rich because of you. He already had money, but he got increases his, his wealth because Mark is one of, if you, Brother Harvey, if you know, Mark is one of the only guys from the 84 game that still had money before he got with Dante Wilder. Right. Because they invest his money. But my problem is with Shelly Finkel. How can you let your fighter talk about your fighter and a guy that you put there, y'all down in Mark, but I want to go out with Michelle. You got this white boy down there in Alabama. If you're going to clean house, when your wife and sister clean house, they clean the whole house, don't they? They clean the whole house. So does that mean you got to get rid of everybody? Your brother, your cousin, and the white boy JD. The white boy JD ain't going away because he's from Alabama. And, and plus you, if you get rid of him, you're going to become a villain in Alabama. I know what it is you taking the race car you talk that black history talk in February so so what I'm saying brother Hobbs and saying to the public why you would pay pay a guy 10% of your big person for 12 years to be disloyal now you now did you hear what he say Mark Tangle with the water now he trying to say Mark did something bad and, and compared to what they say Panama Lewis did with Lexus of Guayo and, and, and Miami Beach against Air Power. Big Mountain. Give me another bottle. That's the one I mix. Okay? Right. Come on. Right. 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 Come on. Yeah, one is too long, Chef. Well, first and foremost, right, the whole notion of a boxing trainer mm -hmm. poisoning his own fighter is absurd to me. Now, I'm Wait. not saying that something like that hasn't happened Three years. in the past. We, we, we all know in the past that fighters were basically treated as if they were property. So no no denial that we've done that. But Mark Breland, again, I don't know him, but Mark Breland has all the signs and symptoms of being an honorable man. And I'm willing to I'm willing to put a bet. If Floyd Mayweather was to give me a million dollars to, to, to wager whether Mark Breland poison Deontay Wilder not I would take 500,000 of that million dollars that Floyd gave me and bet on Mark Breland not to have done that his cabinet speak for itself nowhere in the world a boxing trainer is going to poison his own fight that's just not something it that makes sense Panama Lewis gave Aaron Pryor 
something so you, you to, know, kick, to kick Alexis Arguello's ass. He didn't give him something so that Alexis could kick uh, Aaron Pryor's ass. If, I mean, Panama, if the late Panama did if, that. If the late Panama, if he if he did that. I mean, I don't even think Mark Breland would have tampered with Tyson Fury's uh, water bottle if given the opportunity to. Because once again, that's not his character. Mike is Mark is an honorable guy. He got in that ring and fought. And the reason why Mark stopped that fight because every time Deontay Wilder so got hit, he, Mark Breland got hit. Yeah. Every blow. Because he been there. Every blow that Deontay Wilder absorbed, right. Mark Breland absorbed, and he absorbed enough. And again, for you to get mad at a man that pretty much saved your life, I think that's I think it's very ungrateful. At the press conference. Wilder didn't come. Only Shelly and JD were there. Now, JD's saying we had a system that Wilder want to go out on the shield. He might have went on the slab to the funeral home and whooped Mark Breland. You want to go out on your shield? You got them pretty young babies and you rather leave your babies just, 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 just for some pride and now you tell me you, I'm going back to Africa to claim my throne, my people? Nigga, you ain't our league going to Africa. Sit down some way. Yeah. Talking about my people, you talking about black history, and here you fired a black guy. Here you dogged a black guy, then you gonna dog the commission, then you gonna talk about Kenny Bellis. Kenny Bellis, one of the nicest referees and human beings I ever met. I met him and his twin brother and his mother. I met I met Mama Dukes out there in Vegas. Good guy, then you gonna say he's another crab in the barrel. Come on, man. But you wanna be standing for, for, for black rights, black socialism, but, but you hear you dogging two black guys. That's been loyal to the game. Mark, like we said before, what Mark done in the Amazons have never been done in the history of the, of the sport. As Butch Lewis would say, in the history of the sport. Mm -hmm. So you dogged a guy that worked for you for 12 years for what reason? Because he stopped the fight? Mm -hmm. Now you gonna say he tackled your water? Come on, man. Mama, Mama Wilder read like that. But we're going right back. I fought Shelly. Let me tell you something that you may not know and you may already know. They wouldn't let him in the dressing room to get his bag and his equipment. And he is my blood family. Yeah. And while the lucky I didn't send them soldiers down there. Now, he don't know. Mark is well loved in Brooklyn. By all the niggas in the street, the thieves, the murderers, the hoes, the bifts, the hustlers, and plus all them crews. See, Mark come out of the project. And Mark never was been about with them guys, but them guys love Mark, respect Mark, would help do anything for Mark because Mark was one of them that made and became successful. So Wilder better watch what he's saying. You talking, bro? You down in Tessa Lucy? Y'all ain't no gangsters down there compared to them guys coming out of Brooklyn. So you done my point, brother Hop. You done fired the guy, leave it alone. Mm -hmm. you, you agree? I agree. You fired the guy. You get him his. You, 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 I think from what I'm told. Mark, it's October, so much going on. Mark just got his check from, from the February fight. Mm -hmm. about, you held this man up nine months. He was trying to find a way, Brother Hobbs, not to pay him. Before I even go any farther, right, I want to put something on this podcast. I've already done a tape on what I believe happened. Personally, mm -hmm. in my opinion, mm -hmm. I believe that uh, Tyson Fury hit uh, Deontay Wilder with the palms of his hands and like I explained to you in the last video if you put on a pair of boxing gloves and you palm it left or right hand you'll feel how hard those boxing gloves are right along the ridge of the um, of the palm and in my opinion because I used to hit guys with the palm of my hand not to the head but to the shoulders and to the lower rib, and occasionally I would hit them on the hips with the palms of my hand. That is a very hard, dangerous weapon. And again, that's what I believe uh, Tyson Fury hit Deontay Wilder with. And that explains the egg-like object that Deontay Wilder felt when Tyson Fury hit him. Now the flip side is, it really makes me sad that um, that Deontay Wilder, a brother who talks black, but acts like a uh, a black uh, Klansman toward Mark Breland. And again, I don't know Deontay Wilder either, but I'm just I'm looking at how how you 
put the full focus of your rage on a man that's black like you. A man that essentially saved your life. I mean, to be totally honest with you, uh, Brother Leon, I don't, I don't see any rhyme or reason why anyone with any good sense would, would, would take such a position that he shook. To me, it's, it's, it's purely, it's, it's, it's unsportsmanship. And again, we're not saying that Tyson Fury didn't cheat. I totally believe with every fiber of my being, Deontay, that uh, Tyson Fury hit you with the palms of his hands. But all of this other stuff, accusing Mark Breland of spiking the water, uh, being mad at Mark Breland because he wouldn't let you die, because basically this is your argument, because Mark Breland wouldn't let me die, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna fire the man because he wouldn't let me he wouldn't let me commit suicide in the boxing ring. Did you stop to think about Mark's conscience? Did you stop to think about how that would weigh on Mark Breland? If he did let you die in that box where if he did let Tyson Fury beat you to death, I mean, stop it, black man. You know how many black men have died at the hands of white men? And if Tyson Fury was hitting you with the palms of his hands, man, there's a chance, man, he would have killed you, brother. I think that brother Leon and I covered this to the extent that we could cover it. Um, hey, man, black solidarity first and foremost before I end this uh, broadcast. Um, Hey, God bless Mark Breland. God bless Deontay Wilder. We hope that you, you know, you come to your senses, good brother. And um, it's you know, again, man, this is not this is not us coming down on you. This is uh, two black men. We're both fans of yours, Deontay, but we're bigger fans than Mark. Our loyalty is clearly to Mark. But um, still, man, we 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 ride with you, man. And sometimes, man, the elders got to step in and and say to the youngsters, like, hey, man. You're not handling that right. Bam! Bang! See you next time. Oh, it's temptation comes around.